honest, the name that's coming across the screen is actually the name of these biscuits that I'm going to try to make on the recipe, anyway, online here. Not me bragging about how good they're going to be. So, to begin with, you start with it in a food processor, you finish it by hand, but uh, the dry ingredients, I've already mixed them all together. And I'm going in here to be whirred around, mixed up a bit before we add anything else. But and what were they? It would, I prefer weights, as you probably know, so I've actually weighed these things, but I'll give them to you in, in dry measures. Um, and if, when I put the link to the recipe down below the video, it's one of those really good websites where you can select whether you want to, uh, the English measurements or, or uh, metric, and I, I prefer the metric myself. I find you get a much more consistent thing. But anyway, this has two cups of plain flour. I'm using an unbleached flour. Three and a half teaspoons of baking powder. A half teaspoon of salt. A half teaspoon of cream of tartar. And that is the dry ingredients. Just making sure that they're all evenly mixed together here. And now you add, uh, it says a half cup of cold butter cut into cubes. Well, a half cup of cold butter cut into cubes is a quarter of a pound. 113 grams in, in my case and you want it to be cold so this is just out of the refrigerator and you don't want it to go into a terribly small pieces it says to uh, process it until they are pea size finish this in the mixing bowl. I think that has some things in there that I would call pea size. Anyway, there's still some recognizable pieces of, of butter and that's what you're basically after. And the wet ingredients are two-thirds of a cup of milk and one tablespoon of honey and I've already mixed them together here just making sure they didn't the honey didn't all settle to the bottom but I guess it didn't that's my oven getting up to temperature if you heard the beep 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 in the background preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit This gets turned out on a floured surface to get kneaded a bit after I answer the phone. It's really quite a soft dough. And it just says to knead it a few times to bring it together. It also helps incorporate layers of, of butter, hopefully. <laughs> We're going to get those wonderful flaky biscuits that the recipe says we'll get. I don't want to go too long though because you can also get tough biscuits. And it didn't say anything about using a rolling pin. It just said to pat it out. And they suggested about three quarters of an inch, which I think is a good idea. Most recipes say a half inch or so and they just don't rise as much as you'd like them to. So. But I'm going to try different cuts this time. I have a square biscuit cutter here. and I'll do some square. And I have a round biscuit cutter the same size which is double sided. You can do one that has a scalloped edge. 
one that just has the straight edge. I'm just curious to see if any of them, one rises better than the other. That one is stuck to the stuck to the counter here, I guess. That won't help matters any. What it said not to do, and it made sense to me as well, I like the instructions, is to put the, the biscuit cutter down through and then turn it several times. You want a clean cut on the edge in order for it to separate and, and, and rise nicely. So I'll bring you back when I've got these on the tray ready to go in the oven. These are ready to go in a 450 degree oven for 10 minutes. And there's enough left. I can probably do this many again, a second baking, but I'll just put this many on a tray. It also said you could put them close together, a half inch apart, and then they would sort of grow into each other and that gives them softer sides. I didn't do that as you can see. These are the ones that were just cut with the straight edge round one. This is the scalloped edge round one, obviously the square one. And there's a round one straight edge and one square one extra stuck on the end there. My biscuit making experience, I think back to when I worked on a couple of different farms in Italy a number of years ago. It must be getting close to 10 years ago now. And on both farms I was asked to cook something uh, that would be typical of what I would eat back home that they might not have. And I asked both times if they'd ever had strawberry shortcake and nobody had had it or even heard of it. So I went online and found a shortcake biscuit recipe and there were lots of wonderful fresh strawberries. It was in the winter time, but they were coming in from Sicily, I think. Anyway, I made the strawberry shortcakes. They came out of the oven, the best looking biscuits I've ever made. I don't know if it's Italian flour or a difference in their baking powder that we, they use or what, I don't know, but they shot up about this high. And both times uh, the lady of the host would say, those are beautiful. And I'd say, yes, they are. And I've never produced anything like it before. I haven't sent since I got back home either. There's something that happens in Italy that doesn't happen here. I suspect it might be the flour. I made fun of them in both places about the size of their flour bag. Here we buy 10 kilo bag of, of flour and think nothing of it. Uh, they both had uh, many bags in their pantry of one kilo bag size of, of flour and they said that's, that's how you buy flour in Italy. So that also might make a difference. The flour was in smaller bags and probably much fresher. But these are going in the oven, 450 for 10 minutes. We'll see what they look like anyway. Just out of the oven, too hot to eat, but they do smell very good. I'm debating. I think the ones with, this would have been the one with the scalloped edge. To me, it looks like that rose further than the other ones. That one there did pretty well, though. But they're lovely and light. Let them cool for a second, and we'll try some with butter and jam. Still warm. Cooled out. Oh, they are nice and flaky, aren't they? You see steam coming out, so I guess that indicates they are still warm. A little butter. And a little jam. Can't give you a name for this jam. <laughs> the other day I had, I think maybe four different kinds of jam bottles in the fridge, all homemade jam. But uh, they were down to about a half inch in the bottom of each one. And I put them all into one bottle and mixed it up. It does taste quite good. Mmm. You know, I think those live up to its name. They are delicious, very light, flaky, buttery. Definitely something I would make again. And as I say, the link to the recipe is down below. And this recipe was sort of by request. I had a request to do a recipe for, for biscuits. And these are delicious. They would make a great strawberry shortcake biscuit even. Well, thank you very much for watching.